If you're trying to sell print-on-demand t-shirts and other products on Etsy, it can be really frustrating because there's just thousands and thousands of similar types of designs and it's just so competitive. So how do you break out and actually make print-on-demand sales on Etsy? Etsy. Etsy is one of the biggest marketplaces in the world. There's a ton of traffic coming here and people are willing to part with their hard-earned money to get you a sale and provide them with a great looking print on demand t-shirt. So in this video, I've got five strategies on how you can make more sales specifically on Etsy in the print on demand market space. Let's jump in. As we jump into the strategies here, I just wanna point out, I'm gonna put a link to this website in the video description below. This is a site here called Everbee, and I'm a proud ambassador of Everbee. I use it, it's a great keyword research tool, so it helps you find niches that have high volumes of searches and low competition. It gives you back a keyword score, it's pretty cool. I'll be showing it in this video, and it is an affiliate link, and that just means if you click on the link in the video description, I would receive a small commission. Strategy number one is to use really good thumbnails in your Etsy listings. Here at the top, I've typed in funny dad t-shirt. And now as I start looking down, I'm on a PC, a personal computer, and you can see my actual thumbnails aren't huge. If I was on a phone or an iPad, they'd be even smaller. So you don't get a lot of room to show off a great looking design. And if you've got small text, it can be really difficult to read. So you wanna make sure that you've got something that's eye-catching that you can see right away. So here's a great example. I'll be in the garage six views in the last 24 hours. In addition to having eye-catching thumbnails, you wanna have something that has some character to it. So here we've got a t-shirt that's sitting inside of a big jacket. Here's another one, personalized dad t-shirt. This has got some jeans around it. And then we've got this one here. This guy's wearing a t-shirt. So you don't just want the design. You want it to be like sitting on a person so that they can get the idea of what this would look like on them. In that vein, you also want to have more than one thumbnail as well. You don't just want to have this one. You want now want to have a picture of a guy wearing it. With this one here, husband, father, grandpa, legend, we've now got a picture of the hunky man now wearing the t-shirt. The dad jokes in a database. I think this is a bit weird. If this guy is fathering children we've got a bit of a problem and so I would encourage you as a human being to review this and maybe remove out thumbnails that aren't a great match this one would be much better for example it shows the different colors of the t-shirts and then you can have thumbnails in addition to the actual design you could have sizing charts for example and then you could also have color charts and those are really helpful as well don't skimp out on the thumbnails it could be the difference between you having a customer pass you by or making that sale. Strategy number two is to embrace niche marketing. What do I mean by that? Well, niches are keywords. So here, for example, I've typed in summer into my keyword research tool inside of Everbee, and I can see there's a search volume here of 6,600, a competition of a little over 3 million. That gets me a pretty bad keyword score of zero. So this is not a niche that I would typically pursue. However, I've got related keywords down below and I can search through here and I can sort these by ascending or descending. One of the, my favorite things to do is over on the right, I click on this export button and that actually sends me an email to my inbox so here we can see the spreadsheet that I've got set up with the headers. It says keyword, volume, competition, and keyword score. And I can now go through, I've sorted this by descending so the keyword score is gonna go lower and lower. And as I keep scrolling down, I can see there's a few good ideas in here. But here's one that I really like, Best Friend Summer. It's got a 903 search volume. It's got a 4,100 competition, and that gives me a pretty good keyword score. Let's check out Best Friend Summer on Etsy. So when you're on Etsy and you're looking at competitive niches like anything to do with summer or best friends, here on Etsy I've typed in best friends summer, you're gonna see a lot of different results and you're gonna to have to look at each one to see if there's something that you can compete with. Or at least you have to look at the thumbnails to see if there's anything you can compete with. So here's one that says eight billion people and you're my favorite. You'll notice it's a dark pink on light and a light pink on dark. This is in nine plus baskets, $40, it's 25% off, gets you two hoodies. So you wanna make sure that you're looking in a niche that people are actually enjoying. So if I was thinking of getting into this niche, I'd be looking at what they're doing right. Okay, great looking product, it's in nine plus baskets. I'd go down here and look at the reviews as well and see if this is just a function of a really popular shop or if this is a really popular item and it could I compete with it. Here's another one, this is living our best life. Now you'll notice there's no 
red font up in the top right like there is with this other one. This one says in nine plus baskets. Sometimes it says in 20 plus baskets or it says X amount sold in the last 24 hours. This doesn't have any of that. So don't skip over these ones. Scroll down and you'll see reviews for this item. There's 18 reviews just for this item right here. And you can see here purchased item, purchased item. And you can see reviews on why people like this specific product. Is it the niche? Is it a popular design or are they doing something else? Strategy number three is to use really good product descriptions on Etsy. So I'm actually not gonna start on Etsy. I'm gonna start on Google. I've typed in best friends t-shirt and we can see there's some images that come up and we can see Etsy is in those top images. As I search through the actual results, we can see Etsy, Amazon, Etsy, Amazon, H&M, Spreadshirt, you'll see that Etsy is near the top. Etsy has pretty good SEO, and SEO just stands for Search Engine Optimization. So I'm gonna click on this first one. All right, and we can see right here now, we've got a great looking thumbnail, best friend shirt, best friend shirt, best friend gift, best friend shirts, my best friend t-shirt. Now I would not recommend spamming the actual top result like this, but what I would recommend is you take a look at the item details down below, the item details down below have this paragraph right here. These best friend shirts are made of premium quality ring spun cotton, perfect best friend gift for you. Our soft textile print will not crack or fade and your garment stays fantastic. And then they've got some other stuff down here about the actual shipping. So this is the product description. And then we've got the title here as well. So I would recommend that you figure out how to get your keywords into both the title at the top and the description down below. So you can also reverse engineer on Everbee and you can type in keywords you saw on Etsy. So for example, short girl, tall girl, BFF, best friend, summer. Well, here I've typed in tall girl, search volumes 150, competitions a little over 10,000. The keyword score is not great, but it's not zero. So there's certainly something there. So you'd wanna include this in your SEO, include it in your description somehow. If you have eight, 10 or 12 really good keywords inside your listing, even though individually each keyword might not do a whole lot, combined your listing could attract some eyeballs. Strategy number four is to use customization. If you wanna make a quick sale on Etsy, customize the item, personalize the item, make it specifically for them. So here I am on Everbee, I've typed in personalized wedding. You can see it's a pretty high search volume, but it's a massive competition. So the keyword score is zero. But what if we do something else? Let's brainstorm here for a second. What about personalized ant? We can see here the search volume is pretty robust. Yes, there's lots of competition, but the keyword score is pretty good here at 30. Let's check it out and see if we can make some dent in personalized ant niche. So sometimes you want to ask yourself, why do people go on Etsy? Why don't they just go to the dollar store or to Walmart or to Target? And the answer is personalization. This is in 20 plus baskets. This is a personalized pregnancy announcement, Auntie Uncle Mug Pregnancy Reveal Mug. So you give Auntie Katie this mug to let her know that she's now going to be schlepping kids around for the next 18 years to help out her poor sister. So this is a great idea for a gift. And a lot of people go on Etsy to get gifts for their family members. This is in 20 plus baskets. Here's another one I really like. This is an embroidery design where you take a kid's drawing and you stick it on either a t-shirt or a sweater. Now this is an embroidery pattern, so that might be a little high end, but if you're looking at just print on demand regular t-shirts, there's nothing stopping you from doing that too. You'll see here it says, add your personalization. Send us a drawing via Etsy message, and then you send the picture, and then they stick it on a t-shirt. Well, you could do this yourself, but if you don't know how to do it, that's why you go on Etsy. You get somebody else to do it for you. It's in 20 plus baskets. So the trick is to offer value for the client. Why are they coming to you versus doing it themselves? Why are they going to you on Etsy as opposed to going to a regular department store? Strategy number five is perhaps the most important one. It's customer service. Etsy is not the same as Merch by Amazon or Redbubble or TeePublic. On Etsy, the idea here is that you're establishing a relationship with your customer. So here we can see we've got great looking thumbnails, great looking design, and we've got a great looking title and description. However, down here you can see they're a star seller. This seller consistently earned five star reviews dispatched on time, and here's a really important one, replied quickly to any messages they received. You can see down below here the shop reviews. Loved it, stayed warm the whole time, love it. Great quality and the color is perfect. As you scroll through these different reviews on these shops, sometimes people will say, 
It wasn't exactly as described, but they made it work. The customer experience was good. The owner reached out to me. So you could follow the shop. You can see the owner of the individual shop. You can see here, they've got a great looking thumbnail, shop policies, reviews. Instantly, when I look at this, this gives me a good feeling. This is a real person running this. Their website looks really good. You have, the, you have control over this as a seller. You can set up a really nice thumbnail for your shop. You can set up your shop policies. You can have a pleasant demeanor when you're interfacing with customers. So this is really important because people have a lot of options on Etsy. They don't necessarily have to buy from you. So give them a reason to not only buy from you, but to go back and buy to you because they like you, they wanna support you while they're getting a great product for themselves. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. I really like looking through Etsy listings and seeing really popular products and really good looking shops. And I really like using Everbee because it's a great niche research tool and it can help you find high demand niches with relatively low competition. Here's another video on how you can supercharge your print on demand journey and have some fun doing it. Thanks a lot for watching.